Alrighty then, so what do we have here? It will become more obvious when I pan over to that. So what I'm building here is a solid state Tesla coil and I built the primary coil here and the secondary um, some time ago and I was using a simple what they call a Steyr exciter uh, circuit to power it but I really wanted a um, much nicer uh, Tesla coil that I could uh, play around with and so I ended up buying this uh, board the solid state board from AliExpress. Unfortunately, it didn't come with an instruction manual. I couldn't even find one in Chinese, and there's no circuit diagram. Uh, so it took me a while to figure out what it all does, but I'll just go over this uh, briefly. We have the input side, and this is the driver input, i.e., it's driving the circuitry, and that's via a 12 volt DC input goes like so, it's not actually powered in, so I'll leave it like that. Uh, here we have the primary core, sorry, the primary coil output to the Tesla coil. And I won't go over the circuitry for the output. It's obviously a, a, a big smoother cap. Uh, this is the input, and this kind of confused me because it's it's uh listed as both 12 volt and so 12 volt DC and AC input and what that means is you can choose to use a DC input or an AC input if you use the AC input which is what I'm doing then the information on the website or on the AliExpress recommends uh, 50 to 150 volts AC which will be a bit of an issue for me because in New Zealand where I am at we have 230 volt AC mains so I'm going to have to get a transformer um, to use this in practice for, for test purposes what I've done is I just have a Variac and so I've been playing with that but really I want something I can just plug into the mains and not worry about that uh, there is a, a, a DC input option and that is where these two pots come into play and via using the PWM functionality so we've got the duty cycle and the frequency I think that's the duty cycle and that's the frequency and to enable that you have to have this switch on which turns on the PWM functionality which you basically don't want for your AC input so I have that off uh, we have an, a audio jack here which I won't use this was advertised as a, a Tesla a solid state Tesla coil a musical coil driver so I won't be using that functionality um, if we go around here we have uh, the frequency pot for adjusting your output frequency and these two little pots here are to control essentially to, to achieve the resonant frequency of your secondary, that's the pot there I believe for the secondary, and the primary, and when you get them in res the, the primary and secondary resonant frequency you get the red light is constantly on, so you can tune, basically tune uh, your coil that way, and to achieve that, at least on the secondary side you have this antenna wire which obviously would want to be uh, in a reasonable proximity to the uh, secondary coil. Um, so you tune it via these two uh, pots and also via the output frequency on this pot. And I've already talked about the 
top switch there, which is to turn on the PDLBM functionality. The middle switch is actually the power on off switch. Um, currently in the off position. And the switch below it is to turn on the output. So obviously if you have this off, but that on, your driver board is powered and you get a green light, but the output is not turned on. Should really hit this all in the position. Uh, and that's basically it. Um, it's a huge heat sink there with these IGBT uh, transistors along there. And this does get hot. So what I'm going to do is actually um, order a 40mm DC fan and place it here so I can get air uh, going across those fins um, to take cool air in and blow it across the fins to the out to or to the output here to keep that nice and cool. Uh, and to achieve that there is a jack down there. So that's the 12 volt, you can see it says 12 volt DC output for the fan. This didn't come with a fan, but even even with um, just testing it, this gets really hot. So ideally, if you're going to run this for a long period of time, you want a fan. So I'm going to buy a fan and use that. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, that these toggle switches obviously is a is a cheap convenience. The toggle switches uh, have been soldered onto the board. That's that's just not going to be practical if you want to encase this, uh, you know, enclose this in a case, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to buy uh, three switches and replace these with some a case, basically case switches, which are external to the board, and then run some wires to where these switches were. Um, what else? What else do we have here? Oh, the other thing I'll be doing is 3D printing up a case to, to enclose everything. And that case will also uh, make sure that it correctly fits the secondary coil here, which is on a PVC tube, and also provides a nice convenient um, plug for the grounding wire, which you can see there. Um, so I want this entire thing to be in a box with the primary and the secondary coil on top of it as a single unit so that all I have to do is I plug in my DC jack as the driver input I'll plug in, I have this on a, actually there will be a permanent cord into the box so I can just plug this into the mains voltage and obviously I'll need my transformer because I need to reduce the voltage um, and I'll just have an on and off switch for the power on off switch for the output and as I said earlier I won't use the PWM option so that'll be permanently off and I won't need to worry about an external switch for it so yeah um, the board seems to work reasonably well I've tested it uh, oh the other thing is there's a fuse box there and again obviously for convenience they've welded on the fuse holder onto the board I'm going to take that fuse holder off or basically bypass it so I have a fuse holder externally. So I'm having to blow a fuse, which I've already done. I've already blown two fuses of this. It's easy to do. Um, so if my fuse blows, it's on the outside. I don't have to open up the, the uh, enclosure to replace the fuse. 